welcome back to Llama Mama Kayla's Yarn Tube. I'm Kayla. I live in Louisiana and I am so grateful that you stopped by for a visit today. So why don't you grab yourself a drink, maybe a snack, and a project to work on and let's visit. Hey friends, thanks for joining me at my desk today. I am working on my happy birthday blanket. I can finally tell that it is growing. <laughs> For a while, it felt like it wasn't growing. It felt like I was just crocheting and crocheting and nothing was happening. But it finally feels like it's growing. So, if you are, you know, just tuning in and you don't know, this is a blanket that I've been working on throughout the month of April. You can go back and watch April the 1st and April the 3rd's videos, the first two videos of this month. Um, to tell you more about what's going on and how I started it and put it together and all that kind of stuff and I am using a six millimeter hook on mine but um, you know if anybody decides to make a blanket like this use whatever hook you are comfortable with I'm not saying that you need to use a six millimeter hook just some people have asked me what size hook I'm using I use a six anytime I do blankets um, that's just my preference. I just like the big, fat, fluffy stitches. And so, that's what I use. Now, some people like a smaller hook, and that is great. You use whatever it is you like to use. So, anyway, I got these colors at Joann's. There's videos that you can go back and, you know, catch up on if you need to, if you want to. <laughs> but I'm enjoying working on this and just chatting with my friends here on YouTube while I'm working and you are working on whatever project I know some people are doing blankets like this and some people are just crocheting whatever else or knitting or um, diamond painting or some people are doing laundry or some people are just you know just sitting there watching <laughs> not doing anything that's perfectly fine <laughs> but I hope you're all having a great Friday we have made it all the way to Friday, so happy Friday. It is Friday, um, April the 19th. Oh my gosh, this month is getting away. It's just tracking on by. So, um, yeah, I hope you're having a great day. Uh, Big Daddy and I are actually headed to Shreveport today. Um, it's about two and a half hours from us. We are headed there for my doctor's appointment. I have to see the pain pump doctor there today. I go every every other Friday right now. And what he's going to do today is I have a pain pump in my abdomen on the right side. It's on this side right here. <laughs> um, and it has little tubes that run around to my spine and go in, you know, in between vertebrae or whatever back there and so it it gives me continuous dose of morphine and then also I have a little uh, phone thing controller deal that works my pump and I'm able to give myself um, boluses so what we're doing today is going over for the doctor to up my medication in it by 20% that's that's what they do is up it by 20 percent they they do it a little bit at a time because um once you find the spot you know that is helping you you want to you want to stop right there and use that spot you don't want to like up it too much and you know get too much medication so i'm very pleased and happy with the way they have done it um the whole doctor's office is just wonderful over there and so I'm, I'm very pleased at the treatment I have got and how they're you know taking it easy and and everything with my pump medication and such so I have morphine in it I don't know if I said that I think at this appointment we might even be going to schedule a refill of my medication so they'll be refilling that soonish i'm not sure exactly when i think we're going to talk about that today <laughs> but anyway so that's what we're doing and on our way out of town um i have a few places i want to run by i want to go in five below real quick 
and I'll tell you why in just a minute. <laughs> I want to run in Five Below, um, Sonic to get a, a tea, and then I want to run over to across the river to West Monroe and take a couple of pictures or maybe even some video footage of the big humongous duck that was delivered and set up yesterday. Um, we're fixing to have some duck races. They're rubber ducks, but people, I guess they buy a rubber duck for $10. They're, I don't know if they're numbered or their names put on it or whatever. I don't know how they do all that. And it'll be like 10,000 ducks. They're going to dump in the Washita River and these ducks will just float away. I would love to go and get footage of that, but don't know that it's happened that that could happen. I don't even know what time the duck race is, but um, it, it's Saturday, and usually after Friday of going to Shreveport, I am wore out. Me and Big Daddy both on Saturdays after a Shreveport appointment, we can barely move. So, I don't know that I would be able to do that, but I would love to go get footage of that on Saturday. But anyway, they dumped those 10,000 or more rubber ducks into the Washita River, and then they have a um, an ending where, you know, the first duck to make it there or whatever wins, and then they, you know, scoop out all the ducks. They block off the river to catch all the ducks on a net so it's a fun thing and I, it's a um it's a fundraiser thing i'm pretty sure um i didn't read details about it honestly but i did see that the duck is set up in west monroe and i want to go i want to go see the duck <laughs> it's supposed to be the world's largest duck so anyway and then we're going to run by the bakery and see Dakota for a minute. I have something to give him. And um, probably get us a little snacky. And hit the road. Hit the road, Jack. <laughs> but anyway, so that's our plans for today. As you know, I'm talk as you're watching this, we're probably getting ready to go do all this. So that's up. That's what's up. Now, why am I going to Five Below on the way out of town? Because I went by there last night to get a cat bed. I'm fixing to re redo my whole desk. Um, over here, I have you know lots of my hooks and stuff, and I use these hooks. I mean, I use the hooks up here. I use those hooks. It just depends on the project, the yarn. Um, I mean, here you can see I was using yesterday when I was doing, um, while I was making this little hat here, I used this hook that's normally kept up here. So, I mean, I do use my hook, so I don't want to, uh, I like having them around, so I don't want to hide them because it's easier for me to just sit here and, you know, look and say, oh yeah, I can get that hook right there and, you know, grab a hook and use it. But, um, anyway, so I want to get, I wanted to get a cat bed for the cats because they both want to be next to me. They just want to be close to me and, um, to the point where, you know, Sassy lays right up here on the shelf and knocks my, all my stitch markers down or whatever i've got laid up there i tried to keep it cleaned off for her because whatever i put up there is going to end up down here anyway <laughs> and so and then sissy um she either lays here beside me or in the middle of my project and sassy too you know she'll just come jump in my projects too so I want to get a cat bed and put in the corner over here so that they can get in that cat bed and sleep but yet they're still close to me <laughs> I'm gonna see how that works see if that'll work out in my favor um, now Phoebe when she was a puppy she did live up here on my desk um, she had a bed over here in that corner and that's what she, you know, 
where she slept and her little food bowl and water bowl was up there. Um, I started her off like that when she was a puppy because my, my chihuahua before her, Sophia, she lived on my desk. She did not like to be off my desk. When she went outside to potty, she come running in and, you know, put her paws up on the side of my desk wanting to be picked up to put, be put up here. She did not like to be on the floor. And so, um... And she was a lot smaller than my Chihuahua Phoebe. Sophia was tiny, tiny. But she lived up here on my desk and had a bed over there in the corner. So I'm thinking um, I'm just going to put a bed over there for the cats and see if that will make them happy <laughs> to be close to me but yet not on top of my project or in the middle of what I'm doing. So, anyway, that's why I went to Big... I want to say Big Lots. That's why I went to Five Below is because I was um, looking for a cat bed, and I did find one. I found a cube, actually. It's a square and a hole, you know, in the front so that they can get up in there and kind of feel comfy, I guess. We'll see. We'll see how they like it. Um, I hope they will. So, while I was in there, I, looking at the pet stuff, I saw something that is f marketed for pets, but I was like, oh, I can use that. I, I'm, I got to tie this, so hang on one second, and then I'm going to show you what I got. And I want to run back by there and grab a couple more. Okay, let me try to get this this time. <laughs> I got it. Okay. And then I'm just going to tie a couple of knots right here. Alright, let's see. And then I just trim off my tails. I just trim those off, not too close, but all right. Now, sorry about that. Okay, so when I was in there, this is what I saw. And if I put these back on here, you would just see how cute that is. But it was these little glasses. Look at that. Y'all, that was just the most adorable little thing. And then again, Here's this one with these little glasses. And then there's one more with, um, and it has glasses too, but I'm just going to show you on them. When I saw those, I thought, those will fit my Blythe dolls. They're the perfect size. And so, yeah, I grabbed three of them because I knew those would fit my Blythe doll. They're just the right size. And so, how adorable is that? And so, anyway, I got, um, got these three pair. Uh-oh. I should have took these down and not over the hair. <laughs> um, they are just so adorable on her. And so anyway, I'm going to go back by and pick out, um, they had a couple more different styles, maybe some stars and hearts, glasses. So I'm going to go back by and, um, grab a couple more. And I might even get some of, more of this and, um, paint them. You know, keep one pair like this, but then paint a pair of pink or paint a pair of red or something like that, so... Yeah, isn't that so cute? I love it. I love it. So, that's why I'm going to run back by Five Below. Is to get some more of these crazy little pet glasses in size small. Who would have thought? <laughs> when I saw those, I was like, 
those will fit my Blythe dolls. And sure enough, they did. <laughs> I knew they would. So anyway, this is my doll, Danny. And now she has glasses. Only one of my Blythe dolls had glasses. Katie Ann had a pair of white glasses. And um, I was already thinking of getting some more for different dolls. And so here we are. <laughs> anyway, I just thought that was cute and thought I would share that with you guys. Of why I'm running by there. So, what did I do on Thursday? Well, you know, Friday, I went to um, the doctor. Remember, I just felt so bad. I didn't even feel like going to the doctor. He did give me a Toradol Kinolog shot. And I wasn't sure if that was going to help me or not. But, obviously, it did. Because I got up Thursday morning and... Although, I didn't feel just, like, wonderful, like, oh my gosh, I feel so much better. It wasn't like that, but I just felt like I could do whatever I needed to do. And Big Daddy called me and said, hey, you need to go pick up our prescriptions at Target. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, I had... I had looked at my phone and Zeke's mom had texted me something and so I texted her back and said hey I was just listening to text you to see if um Zeke wanted to go to Target with me he loves to go to Target with me and so um she said sure he'll he'll be down in a few minutes and so he came on down and we went to Target and then, where else did we go? Oh, I don't think we went anywhere else. We just went to Target. And then we went to his house. But we had fun in Target. We had a blast just walking around, looking at stuff, being silly. I love that kid. <laughs> but um, I will tell y'all this. Uh, when I got up this morning... I saw a sign in the road and I was like what is on that sign and so I text Big Daddy and said hey there's a sign in the road was it there when you left this morning and he said yeah it's at, it's at the driveway he said yeah um, it's you know saying that there's high water down there past the house and I was like oh, okay so anyway I didn't go look at the water today when it was just me and Zeke, but then Big Daddy had um, called me before he left work in the afternoon and said, um, let's go uptown when I get home, be ready. And so I was ready, and when he drove up, I went out there and um, we went uptown, but first we went and looked, we went on down our road past our house to see about the water and then we um went down the highway around the back side of our house and went down drove down to the bayou and so I did take some clips of that and I'll include those like right here here's the sign they put up right in front of my house that's my driveway right to the left and so this is right past the house, the flooding, um, just the water. Me and Big Daddy drove down there to just see <laughs> how, you know, what the water looked like and how much was there and stuff. So, yeah, it's still a lot of water that needs to go away. That's the fire break right there that is just flooded um, in between property. And that's down at the corner of our property. So, yeah, Big Daddy drove a little further down than I have. I didn't want to drive so far down there. <laughs> that's the fire break there. And, yeah, it is pretty much flooded. <laughs> Silly man. I love that man. Ugh. Yeah, it's a lot of water, and we don't need any rain. We don't need any rain. And so this is 
coming down Miller Road, which we live off of, and that is a house that's up on stilts. They still have a lot of water that needs to go somewhere. Lord, it needs to go somewhere. <laughs> And then this, we're coming up on, this is like behind my house on the highway. If you went through the woods all the way to my house, from my house, that's where you'd end up. And so we're coming up on the, um, the back way to turn in to, to go to our house and the way that we normally use because our road is in such bad condition. But it's flooded here, so we can't turn in there. And go home that way because um, that's really deep right there and then on down you can't really see but on down that road down to the curve there is a lot of water also so yeah we're just waiting for this water to evaporate I guess because the the land is so saturated it's not the earth is not sucking it up so we need a lot of sun and a lot of wind <laughs> and for the earth to be thirsty i love watching those cranes though and they've been flying up and down the road in front of my house um and this is just you know some water um, we're actually driving down to look at bayou lafouche which is right past our house and so all that water that you see in right there is from Bayou Lafouche. There is a levee under that water. There's a levee, but it's underwater. It's supposed to keep water on the other side, <laughs> but it was so much water, it's come up over the levee. But yeah, and a levee is like a huge hill. If in case you know, you don't know, it's like a huge hill, and um. It separates water unless it's underwater and then it doesn't <laughs> uh, but yeah we're coming up on Lafouche by year and we was just driving down to um, I wanted to see what it looked like how far out of the banks how full it was and it is full and that water is just sitting it's not running it's not draining it is just sitting there doing nothing because it doesn't have anywhere to go except it could go towards me and I don't want it to so I'm happy with it sitting there as long as it stays down there <laughs> and not flowing towards me that's what we don't want but yeah you can just see there's there's a lot of water a lot of water so now we're coming up on um, and there's a culvert under this little driveway that we're kind of turning into there there's a culvert under there and that's where that's by your lafouche right there all this water that's close to me right there is not supposed to be there um that's supposed to just be a ditch <laughs> the water's supposed to end um at the over where the bridge is so you can see it's out of its banks and I think I did zoom in yeah there's the bridge um, you can see the water's pretty high up to the bridge and the water should be ending right there but it's out so yeah we still have a lot of water to deal with um, we're supposed to be getting some more rain and I, I hate that you know we had got 9.2 inches here this past week and we really just do not need any more rain we've had just a little bit today it sprinkled just a little um they were saying it was going to be kind of a lot i guess but thankfully it was further north of us and um it didn't rain right here on us we got some sprinkles um some misting but not a downpour thank goodness <laughs> thank goodness so we're just keeping an eye on the water keeping an eye on the roads um and keeping an eye on Bayou Lafouche is just kind of sitting still that water is not even moving 
and we need that water to be moving. <laughs> but um, the water's just kind of sitting with like not really anywhere to go down there. Ooh. So, um, oh, someone, so someone had asked me about my ball trick. They asked where did, where did I learn that ball trick. I don't think I learned it anywhere. It was just thinking through my project. I have made granny blankets with scrap yarn. I've made granny blankets with special yarn that I bought for that project. I've made granny square blankets, um, you know, where I went all the way around a couple of rows for each color and that does use more yarn because as your yarn blanket grows you use more yarn going around so you would need more um skeins of each yarn right and so i didn't want to do that i only wanted one skein of each color and so the only thing the way to do that and not run out of yarn is just to make some balls and let it kind of go a little bit random it's still going in my color sequence but my balls don't go all the way around or they might go all the way around and overlap it just depends on the size of the ball and i don't want my balls to be the same size I want them to be different sizes and randomness, so um, that that's what I'm doing there with those balls. So, yep. But I just tried it before on a blanket, and it worked perfectly. And and so I've I've done it that way several times now, just because I I really like that. And even though it. Um, I'm still going in this color sequence, so it still flows very well with the eye and looks pleasing. <laughs> uh, somebody asked me what is my favorite garment that I have crocheted. I would say that it is my granny pullover sweater um, from Premier Yarns pattern. That That's my favorite item that I've made for myself to wear and then the next one would definitely be the um, spring fling t-shirt by cinnamon stitches that I crocheted with some um, crochet um, cotton yarn cotton that would definitely be my second choice Anyway, let me see. Um, I was going to answer a few questions here that you guys have asked. Let's see. Um, somebody asked, when did I start collecting dolls? Um, my whole life, I've always loved dolls, and I've always collected dolls my whole life. I know when people see my doll collection, they're just like... Um, gasping but hey i'm 53 years old <laughs> that's a lifetime of dolls in there so yeah i have i just have a whole um collection of all kinds of different dolls um from like tiny little three inch dolls little rubber um three inch dolls from germany to big tall you know 32 and 48 inch dolls so yeah i have a wide collection there oh uh, let's see um someone asked were we close to big daddy's parents yes we were they lived next door to us. We were very close to them. <laughs> um, his his um, parents lived next door to us. His dad, um, he was only alive for the first three months of Dakota's life. And then he passed away suddenly, very unexpectedly. 
but he would come and see Dakota every day when he got off work. He parked his truck, came to my front door to see the baby before he ever went in his house. He always did that. If he was sick, he just wanted me to hold the baby up and let him look at him. <laughs> he would have been an awesome grandfather. He really would have. I hate that he passed away. And I was with him when he passed away. Um, on the phone, I was on the phone with 911, which seemed like forever. Very, very long time for them to get here. But, um, yeah, we were, we were close to them. Um, they, we would either have them over here to eat or we would go over and eat with them. Um, you know, supper, dinner, whatever you want to call it, all the time. Um, and then his dad passed away and his mom lived there. And so she, she was always over here, um, you know, seeing the kids and everything. Um, and we went to town together and stuff all the time. Um, she was a good memo. And then, um, Dodie's youngest brother had moved, um, down in Alexandra. And so she wanted to go and stay with him. So that's what she ended up doing. She ended up selling her house to my dad, who just bought it so that she could move. And then, um, and we didn't want anybody else, you, you know, to buy it. But, um, we didn't want neighbors. And so my dad bought it. And then she actually moved to Alexandra with, um, the youngest of her sons. She had four. And, um, so then, um, and we would go down there and visit with them and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, my kids have fond memories of their memo. And she passed away in 2016. That was really hard on us. Um, let's see. So, somebody asked me a question. And then they said they was really just joking. But I'm going to answer it anyway. It's not too personal for me. You know, I'm the TMI girl. <laughs> too much information. Um, somebody asked me, how do I cut my toenails? Well, I don't. And I'm just going to be honest with you. Elijah is the, my son Elijah, is the only person who can cut my toenails without hurting me. And so anytime he has been in, I get him to cut my toenails. And he's the lucky one. Big Daddy will cut them for me, but he he always seems to hurt me. <laughs> um, he, it's just the way he does it. I'm very, very sensitive on my feet. I do not like anyone touching my feet. And um, I'm just, I'm not a foot person. And Elijah, somehow he can do it with barely touching my foot, but yet not hurting me. So, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes I have to get Big Daddy to do it. And he does it, but I don't like the way he does it. <laughs> I like the way Elijah does it. And then somebody else asked me, what does Elijah do for a living? Well, um, Elijah was... He went to... Um, he went to college to be an EMT, and right then, right when he was finishing up school, he had finished, COVID hit, and they locked everything down. He couldn't go take his final test. He, he took the part that he could take here, and then he was going to go to Shreveport, but yet they wasn't given the test, and it was just, it was an awful time. And it really just messed up things for him. So he did not get to finish that until way later. He finally was able to go once they started doing that testing again. And he had to check on it and get it situated and all that and lined up to go and do it. So he was EMT. But yet I didn't want him really working EMT during COVID. And 
I don't know. It was just, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> um, he and and the Ar and then he moved to Arkansas, and what he was doing there was um, a security guard. And he took the course and all that kind of stuff to be the security guard. But it, the place he was assigned to was next to a really, really bad place that had shootings like every night. And even some of the security guards were getting shot at. And I was just so uneasy about that. I was doing a lot of praying for that kid. Um, and he finally, um, he, he did quit that job. And he had some interviews lined up and he hasn't heard back from them but he's still filling out for more interviews I mean more uh, resumes and stuff like that putting in applications so he, he's trying he's working on something else and so I haven't even asked him about an EMT up there but I think he would have to um, I don't know if he'd have to I mean, he'd obviously have to get licensed for Arkansas and not Louisiana. So, I don't know what he plans to do. I know for his driver's license, he did not... He, he got his license renewed here in Louisiana. And I said, why don't you just renew your driver's license? You know, get your driver's license there. Change them to Arkansas. And he said, I don't want to change them to Arkansas. I want to keep them Louisiana. So that makes me feel like he may come home one day, you know, come back to Louisiana. I doubt he'll ever live here again. I don't know. He might. Who knows? <laughs> I, and so, um, so he may not want to change his EMT license to Arkansas. I don't know. I have no idea. We really haven't discussed that. So I'm just guessing. Guessing, guessing. <laughs> Somebody asked me, do, does our house have a back door? Yes, it does. It has two back doors, actually. And um, the laundry room is a back door that goes outside. And in my bedroom, there's a back door that goes outside. So our house is very long. It's... Um, our house is long, like, like that long. I mean, it's long like this. And so we have the front door right here, so about, you know, and then there, there's a back door here, uh, the kitchen from the kitchen to the laundry room. There's a back door back there. And then my bedroom is down here and there's a back door there. And I, you know, wanted that door put there because if there was ever a fire up here, we would have been trapped back here. And so I did have that door put in right there. So that we would always, you know, have a way out there. So, yeah, we got two back doors. Uh, somebody asked, um, can Big Daddy work from home? No, um, there's a lot of hands-on work he does at his job. He has so, he wears so many hats at his job. There's a little bit of computer work he can do it from home, but um, he can't just strictly work from home because he does a lot of hands-on, um, has to be there for, you know, stuff that he does he wears a lot of hats at work a lot of hats and sometimes he's under a lot of stress at work also oh i feel something on me and it makes me feel like there's a, a caterpillar on me but it's not <laughs> i swear i can oh it's a string my shirt has a um it ties in the back the back of the neck ties and that string is hanging down the inside of my shirt oh I felt like a caterpillar there for a minute <laughs> I'm, I'm over these caterpillars miss curry <laughs> i know i know you love the caterpillars and you're raising them and all that but i'm over them they just dropping out of the trees on you um when i came home today and was coming 
up the porch to come in the front door, they just started dropping um, onto the doorsteps. And so I was just like, ugh, I have to run real quick to get in. And Dakota's little wagon that he got when he for his first birthday is parked out here under the car uh, under the porch and this morning it was covered in caterpillars i don't know what the deal is but they are everywhere lots and lots of caterpillars i'm over them <laughs> i wish i could load them all up and bring them to you miss curry <laughs> Uh, let's see someone asked me have I ever done crochet tapestry I have not but I have seen photos online where people have done some beautiful pieces I mean just amazing beautiful pieces so that is an art for sure I love that I love seeing stuff like that because it is so cool but I have not done anything like that. I've not tried or... Yeah, I don't even know where I'd begin. <laughs> right now, I'm doing good just to do this. <laughs> really and truly. Well, guys, I hope you all have a great Friday and a start to your weekend. Let's see. What do we have going on this weekend? We don't really have anything because... Usually after a trip like going to Shreveport, we are busted. So tired. So it takes us pretty much the weekend to recuperate. Um, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> uh, but um, I, need, I need some crocheting done on this blanket. I can't... I, I did take... Uh, a project in the car with me one day and was going to work on it with a blanket but I couldn't crochet on it because I have to have it laying on a table I can't put it in my lap or hold it up I, I just can't crochet that way so I have to have a table so I tried and I was like oh this ain't gonna work and so I just put it away and that might have been last time we went to Shreveport. I did try that and it just didn't didn't work for me. But I do like crocheting in the car. I've always, you know, done done worked on projects and stuff in the car. But oh, it didn't work. <laughs> okay guys, well, I am going to let you all get going. And crochet on this some and I hope you all have a wonderful day remember it's a beautiful day to crochet and I will see you all in the next video friends love you guys <laughs>